Thank you very much for coming Damn, out. Damn, man, he doing the WAP. That's the old dance. We got to teach you some new moves. Uh, uh, man. <laughs> hey, y'all, listen, man. What's good with y'all, man? Number five in America. Rhythmic song. Sunshine, the light. And you wondering why I'm so hyped. Because I love everybody. And I represent an era of hip hop. And many of our living legends, our giants, our greats, the greatest of all times that flowed like the illest things in the world, the guys we worship. Nobody has ever been my age and put one out the park like this, number five in America. I want to thank Luther Van Joss Estate. I want to thank Rihanna, DJ Amorphous, DJ Khaled, Cool and Drake. But be clear, I'm not crazy and I don't lie. And so be clear, when I say no one, I mean no one has put, no OG has ever put one in that chart. And I'm not disrespecting my people because nobody loves the OGs like me. Nobody reps the OGs like me. But be clear. And something I learned from Kanye, if you don't speak it out, if you don't talk on it yourself, they won't never talk about it. They will never talk about it. And so I got to say, thank God. I got to say, thank you, the fans. Thank everybody at Radio Rhythmic Urban and Pop who've been going. Thank everybody streaming. Because the shit keep going up every day. They keep saying, yo, this is the best day yet. It's the best day yet. Thank God we wanted more Empire. Uh, scam artist, my brother, uh, Suchit. And so I'm excited. And I'll tell you a quick story. When I was, uh, when I had turned 40 years old, Supper Shard, when I had turned 40 years old, I was depressed. And I just thought it was over. 40 years old, it's over. Career, you got to understand, I've been doing this shit since I'm like 1920. So I'm thinking it's over. You know, I'm washed up. I turned 40. And my brother Dre of Cool and Dre came over the crib. Mind you, it was a palacio. <laughs> it, ceilings to the sky, gold walls, chandeliers, pool a mile long. It was, I was all right. But mentally, I was fucked up because you start telling yourself rap is a young guy's game, which is true. It's a young and a girl, younger female's game. This is the truth. But 40, oh, I was depressed. And I was sitting in that in, in, in that chair and Dre came and Dre told me some bullshit. Dre sat down with me and said, listen, my brother, we got to get back in the studio. I was like, yo, Dre is over. I turned 40. Everybody 40 years old, they washed up. They done. And Dre said, let me tell you something, Joe. Tina Turner got her first hit record when she was 50 years old. Old. This is 10 years ago he told me this shit. And I said, yo, don't bullshit me, Dre. He said, listen, what's love got to do with it came out when she was 50 years old. He said, there's no time limit in greatness. And I gassed myself, lied to myself. And, and then you wonder why I've been going so hard where all your other OGs just fall back and I bring you to all the way up to another round. To, I won't tell, I keep dropping music because he gassed me when I turned 40 telling me, Cena Turner did it at 50 years old. And so I never gave up. And so is there something to be excited about? Yes, this is unicorn shit. It never happened though. Like all you scholars and everybody who's watching and everybody who knows hip hop and the greatest of this, and this, 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 it's never happened before. Never. Ever, 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 ever. And so I agree with Nipsey Hussle, rest in peace, that life is a marathon. Some people like to be a success overnight, lose it, and it's over. Some people work on it. Practice, practice makes perfect, and then get longevity. Obviously, rest in peace, DMX, the dog. Uh, wow. What a week. 
right? And so, uh, shout out to Swiss, the whole family, Lisa Evans covering it. Um, and so, we here for DMX, and we'll always be here for DMX. This weekend, I went to Tiffany Lighty. Chris Lighty discovered me. It was his daughter's wedding with Nick. Beautiful guy, man. Uh, Chris would be so happy. So I went. A bunch of his friends, Jessica uh, Rosenblum was there. Uh, LL Cool J, which is my idol. And so I, I found a way to uh, to groupie out LL for about three hours straight, talk a hole in his head. I'm not losing that for nothing in the world. So y'all got to realize, this is my idol. I don't know who's your idol. But I got to stand with my idol for three hours talking back and forth. And I realized he knows a little bit more about me than I knew he knew about me. And I was so impressed. And my daughter, she kept me, you know, executive producer as a while. She held me down and she was with me. She was my date. And, uh, and, and, and she just said she had to break a silence like an hour later. She said, LL, I don't think you understand how much my father loves you. <laughs> And he knows. And so we got to talking and and, and and I told L, I said, yo, L, I will not let nobody make me feel guilty about living great. Okay? And so when I was born and raised in the South Bronx, in Bronx Lebanon Hospital, broke and poor, and nobody ever gave us nothing. And so I made it out of there and so now I celebrate success and try to inspire the people by showing them life and showing them how they can be better and they can grow up in the Bronx or in the hood, any hood and get better. I'm not going to feel sorry for being successful. I'm not going to feel guilty for enjoying my life with my family. And he said, you're right, Joe. And I said, I won't. Because... You know, we come in this world alone. We don't have nothing. We grow up poor. You know, I feel good that I can honestly say I've made about 10, 20 people multimillionaires in their lifetime. When I could have been selfish and just did it all to myself and try to eat for myself. And they fed a bunch of people. You know, I could tell you people I put on that they got 20, 30 employees that's living good. So the family tree is big. So I'm, I'm talking shit like that to LL. I don't know if I'm supposed to be telling you everything I'm talking to him about. But I'm telling him I'm not. And I'm never going to feel guilty about living great. While I'm here on earth and you only get one life. Shout out to Tiffany Lighty, the whole Lighty family, his mother. I met his mother. Um, and I told the woman, listen, your son saved my life. She said, I heard you say that a bunch of times on interviews. I said, yes. And if you need me for anything in the universe, in the world, please holler at me because I'm a real one. And I'm here. She was like, thank you very much, whatever the case may be. Now, tonight we have a guest. You can learn, it's focused on Manhattan, but you can learn a lot about this around the country. Uh, I got a phone call from a man I admire very much, a friend of mine over 25 years. He's a legend in the music game. His name is just Jason Flom. And the reason why I love Jason Flom is because he donates his time and a lot of money, many millions of dollars to the Innocence Project. I don't know if you know what the Innocence Project is. It's where they bring lawyers to defend People that were falsely accused, mostly black and brown people, white people too, that were falsely accused. And they're doing 25 years in jail, like the Central Park Five and all these guys like this. There's a lot of people in jail who didn't do the crime. And so they put together a fund. And so my brother, Jason Flom, who's my friend for many, many years in the music business, he is... Somebody I respect because he's always giving back to that call. So he tells me, you got to bring a brother up. He's running for, hold up, district attorney of Manhattan. And he says, and when you speak to Jason Flom, who's been helping people get out of jail for so many years, you got to wonder, why does he want to support this guy? Why does he want me to bring him on the show? And so 
I've never voted for a district attorney. I don't know too many black and brown people. I don't want to talk for you that have voted for a district attorney. But today we want to find out why should we? So uh, let me get my guests right now. So we could all learn together. He said, I got charges in three different states. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Sorry. Yes, we make sense now. Mm-hmm. Alvin Bragg. Let's see if he steps up. I sent out the request. I'll do it again. And so when because man, I got some questions. Man, I got some questions. By voting, we can demand change. Okay. I mean, I'm a question. Yo, don't make a lot of noise back there, please, guys. Talking, Danny, all that loud shit, man. Come on. And so the show is hip hop, the show is educational, the show is anything that matters in our community. So we're going to learn something together. You know, today. I'm still requesting if Alvin is there. Yeah, I know. I keep I'm requesting right now. Alvin Bragg N Y C A L V I N B R G G N Y C. I can't tell you who gave me my first distribution deal. <laughs> I see I see Jason Flom on here. I don't see Alvin Bragg. Send in a request again. I'm sending a request. Can Alvin Bragg, somebody in there? Alvin Bragg from your Instagram, just go, yo, I'm here. Let me try the old-fashioned way because I keep sending requests. I keep sending requests. Oh man, the boy, we need that. <laughs> Sending a request. And so we want to know. Because I've never voted for a prosecutor or a district attorney. We just want to know. Um I see people in their comments. Well, everybody got to love DMX. He put it down for the game so hard. And we already talked about it. I said it already. You know, everybody has their own issues they deal with. You know, some people, you, you just can't.
can't help them with what they're doing. And so there's nothing like, I told you, I got a brother that I dealt with this shit my whole life, Mariah Carey. The most famous, the greatest people in the world can't stop somebody else from what they want to do in life. And so what people are not supposed to do, not big up DMX, not love DMX. You know, me personally, I talked about DMX in the last show. I've been, they asked me to do a million interviews about DMX. I'm not the clout chaser. I'm not clout chasing death or nothing like that. So I personally have to tell people that I love, yo, I can't do it because I don't want people to think I'm clout chasing DMX. But we're going to uplift this name. And, you know, and we're going to love him. And you can have an artist that you never met in your life. You're a fan and you love him too. So it's, it's you know, I don't understand why this ain't going through. Yo, Dan, give me a little uh, napkin, a towel or some shit because this bucket hat got me sweating. Yeah, Alvin Bragg, you got to put your little, uh, come up on here on the comments and say, hey, I'm here. Or because this is the 10th time I'm, I'm, I'm requesting you. Man. Yeah, rest in peace, Big L. Yeah, you know, it's a funny thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Because when people got their own, and people got their own clout, their own fame, their own money, you know, you know, you got to, you know, it's hard for me because I see this all the time with everybody, with people that pass away. He's, nah, he's, yo, 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 Jason, excuse me. If y'all see, if y'all see Alvin on here, let me know, because I keep requesting him. I keep requesting. I just requested right now. Do y'all see him? Oh, they said we see him. Let me see. Where is Alvin? I'm trying to find him. Dang. I see my man. Puzzle life in the building. I'm trying to find it. I do not see him. Tell me. I keep requesting, guys. This is this is this is fucked up. This is fucked up. This is fucked up. And this is a very educational show. We all need this right here. Request again. Um, why don't you request to uh, Jason Flom if you're there, and then we could probably do a three-way thing. Cause I don't, I, 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 I can't get him. Damn. I see Puzzle Life. He's walking in place for the autism community. You know what I'm saying? And let me tell you something, man. Don't be mad at seeing your OGs with their teeth and looking good, bro. Nah, Lisa Brown, what's up? Don't be, don't be mad at them do, looking good, man. Because it's crazy. i never seen somebody like, 
you know, jealousy is a fucking disease, guys. Like, it's horrible, bro. It's horrible. Jealousy is, is horrible. I tell everybody you got the same 24 hours in the life, in the day, to do what you got to do to be successful. And you got the same 24 hours, man. And go, look, I see Jason Flom. You see, yo, Jason, you see what I just did right now? It worked perfectly fine. I keep hitting Alvin just like I'm hitting you, and it's not working. Yeah, but other people are seeing him on there. It's the strangest thing. I don't understand what's going on. It's the strangest on. thing, and I got so he, plenty of questions for this guy. I know. He, like, he, just, he, he just popped off, and he's popping back on. But yeah, other so people why don't are commenting. You request I see you. Him. You can do three now. Why don't you request him right now just to secure that he's on here? You request okay, Alvin how, I, how do I do that when I'm on your thing here? You um, would just see him request or something and just go Alvin Bragg. A L V I N B R A G G. Where do I where do I go to how do I go to request? That's what they There's a understand. box in the bottom. There's a box in the bottom. The first okay. box. It says comment three dots yep. in the box. Yep, and then what? Hit that and then it'll say request and then and then type in Alvin Bragg. When I put in, I go to the box in the bottom. Oh, the camera button. Oh, somebody said the camera button. Okay, everybody's trying to help. I'm so, everybody's trying. I'm like, so, we want to know. So man. Here. And I'm I ain't so going to lie to you, yo, Jason. The people waiting. I, I, like, I, I'm like, they, they want to see. They want to know what it is. I'm excited. I'm excited to see it to myself. <laughs> Jesus. Now, why don't I see the camera button here? I see the it's little. Right here. It says comment three dots in that first box that you see right there. I don't got three comments. Comment. You got yeah. that. Three dots. That first box that you see right there to the right of it, right next to the three dots, just press that box. I'll press that's like a little two. that's like a little button. That's like a yeah, button. Yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh I go there and oh I see there. I search Alvin. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. You know I never lied okay, to you. Okay, Jason. I just did it. You told I just me did get, it. Okay. You told me get no, your man on. I ain't lying to you, man. No, and Come I appreciate on, the man. shout out. But let me let me talk about let me talk with you about Alvin for a minute because he's trying, mm -hmm. he's struggling over there. For whatever reason, everybody can see him except you. He but got we, that government Wi-Fi. That's it. <laughs> he, let he me, got that legal he got the government Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. He's yeah, not in the government yeah. right now. No, he's not in the government at the moment. <laughs> but uh that's hilarious. That's hilarious. What's up, Joe? Good to see you anyway. Um, a shout out to everybody that's out there. Um, yeah, so Alvin, I got to know this man. Listen, Alvin Bragg grew up in Harlem. He still lives in Harlem. He raised his kids in Harlem. He was a, vi a victim of police violence three times while he was going to Harvard University and Harvard Law School. He's Harvard squared. That's how smart this man is. Mm -hmm. And he is a man who has prosecuted police officers. He's prosecuted prosecutors when they did wrong. I mean, this, this guy does not back down. And he's here to, to, to represent the people of this city who are people that look like him, who grew up like him. You know, I mean. So, this, Jason, let me, I, I told people that, you know, I know Jason Flom for over 25 years from the music business. You signed some of the biggest artists in the world. But the thing I respect most about you is um, that you hit, you give back to the Innocence Project and you help brothers and sisters get home from jail that are doing time that, uh, that don't deserve to be there. And so when you tell me, Joe, you have to, when you tell me, yo, what you got a killer over there? Like, that's right. Like, my, pit, my, my pit bull puppy. He's a puppy. He's going crazy. Look at him. Look at this guy. Yeah, Look at this guy, Joe. Yeah, that crazy. boy's a murderer, Jay. Look, Joe, we're going to put you on TV. Where, Freddie, where are you? Jesus where are you, Freddie? Christ. Come here. Yeah. Where, where, is this guy? where is this guy? Where is he? Come yeah, here, Freddie. He sound like he's going to eat the phone. <laughs> and so, I can't even find him here. Jason, the fact that you asked me to interview Alvin, I know he got to be a great guy. I know he got to be for the people. Even though we usually uh, look at district attorneys and prosecutors as giving our people time in jail, unjust and unfairly. So what makes us go and vote for somebody for district attorney when you see everything that's going on in the climate right now in the world with Minnesota, just, just, just 10 minutes from where George Floyd's trial is at, they killed another brother uh, yesterday in the car. 
So, it's sickening. It's every day. It's every day. And that's why we have to get progressive prosecutors. It's the only way we're going to fix this, right? We have to get people in there that believe in justice, not in prosecution, but in actual justice. Too many prosecutors, they just take the easy way out. And we got innocent people in Manhattan all over the place, like my man John Adrian Velasquez up in Sing Sing and, and Bruce Bryant and so many people, Paul Cortez, so many people, so many cases I'm working on personally now with people. I remember those names people who are as innocent as could be. I guarantee you there's 1,231 people watching now. I guarantee you these people have, many of them probably have relatives wrongfully convicted in jail in, in the five boroughs for sure, but definitely in Manhattan as well, because they really haven't been freeing people in Manhattan, you know? And Alvin has a whole different agenda. He wants, he wants to do what's right. He wants to free the people that are innocent. You know, he's not trying to... Uh, uh, will, do, will he create a special unit for prosecutors, because when we go in there and we deal with prosecutors and DAs, usually their job is to convict. And it's really supposed to be seeking justice either way. If the guy's innocent, they, they should be looking for that and to convict. But many times, they're eager to try to convict somebody. And now we got people who's in jail for so many nonviolent crimes who's doing 20, 30 years, decades, is, is he talking about bringing those people back out even when they exhausted all the legal court procedures? Is he looking at exonerating people who's been in jail for years for nonviolent crimes? That's exactly right. He has laid out an entire plan. You can go on his website, Alvin Bragg. Uh, Al, let me just look it up. Alvin Bragg for DA.com, I think it's called. And he, he lays out his policy platform that includes a lot of the things that you're talking about. He's, he's never prosecuted somebody. He told me the only time he's ever prosecuted somebody, he was a prosecutor, by the way, he was a federal prosecutor. The only time he's ever prosecuted somebody for a low-level crime was when he caught people blocking the entrance to an abortion clinic. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't prosecute people for marijuana. That's not his agenda. He grew up with these people, right? And, but, and by the way, that's not to say there aren't people who grew up the way he did and turn out to be bad, right? And turn out to be vindictive towards their own people that come from where they came from. But that's not him. He's never, and, and the history shows it. And I'm telling you, even like, among the people I work with in the criminal justice reform world, and I work with a lot of them, I've never seen a consensus where everybody's on board calling me up going, Jason, you got to get on board with Alvin. Everybody's talking about it. And I'm like, I'm already on board with Alvin, but everybody what, knows. What's so big, is, Jason, what's so big about, because I realize they have about five, six people trying to be, uh, district attorney, it, it, it's, is, is it like a power tripping job? Because I even seen billionaires going for this position. Like, why do somebody who's a billionaire wants to be the district attorney or the prosecutor of Manhattan? Why, why was somebody so wealthy? Like, you know, because I had to do this interview, I had to read up on all the uh, people going for district attorney. It's, it blows my mind the amount of people trying to become district attorney. Because, Joe, at the end of the day, that's where the power is, right? At the end of the day, that's the person who's making the decisions, not only whether to prosecute people for low-level crimes, whether to prosecute people with or without evidence. A lot of people are prosecuting this country. You know that they get framed, et cetera, right? And then also whether to prosecute the, the, the authority figures when they do wrong. We're, we're in this era where police violence is on everybody's mind right now. He's the one guy, I believe, you know, he's the guy who has the best chance to win, who is going to take the strongest stance towards not allowing that to continue. We just ended qualified immunity in New York City, right? So cops can no longer do whatever they want with immunity. But, and by the way, the website is alvinbragg.com, alvinbragg.com. And I'm looking at his platform right here, okay? Mm -hmm. Justice for sex crime survivors, reducing gun violence, ending racial disparities, declining and diverting minor offenses, fighting for economic justice. He's, he's the head of the racial, um, um, I can't remember the name of the racial equality uh, program at, at New York Law School. He's, a, uh, he's a, uh, up at, um, what's it called, Ebenezer Baptist Church. I mean, he, this, this man is a, is a man who, who, I mean, he walks the walk. What can I say? Ending mass incarceration is in big letters on right on his website. So that's, the biggest, right that's the biggest thing, because mass incarceration is what's going on in America. And, and, and just everybody just seems to just go up to jail and we never hear from them again. And they're doing major time for nonviolent crimes. And how do we try to end mass incarceration? So when your job, right? So, so
So when your job is to be a prosecutor and bring justice to people, how does he see ending mass incarceration? How does he see uh, ending mass in incarceration? So I'm going to read you this from his website right now. And again, mm -hmm. I, people can say what they yeah. want. Yeah, Jason, you just became campaign manager right now. Because <laughs> your Alvin Bragg's Instagram don't work, man. This is some crazy shit. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm it again. It. Read it from his, from his uh Maybe, maybe people end up voting for me. No, don't vote for me. Do not do that. That is not going to be helpful to anybody. <laughs> so reverse, this is, this is Alvin Bragg's words. You ready? Reversing yes. the effects of mass incarceration is an urgent moral, civil rights, and human rights issue and is one of Alvin's highest priorities as a Manhattan district attorney. Throughout his career, Alvin has worked to address the effects of mass incarceration. For example, he led the attorney general's review of stop and frisk policy practices. Get down. That's fucking crazy dog, man. Um, of stop and frisk practices, uh, which showed that only 1% of the stops resulted in a conviction for a gun offense. He also led the attorney general's work to address the effects of the school to prison pipeline, investigating two school districts and requiring them to stop overly punitive and discriminatory disciplinary practice and adopt restorative justice principles. Unfortunately, the current Manhattan DA is disproportionately contributing to mass incarceration in New York City. And everybody on this call knows that. A lot of people, unfortunately, firsthand. Data from the state's Department of Criminal Justice Services indicates that in 2019, Manhattan sent over three times the percentage of felony cases to prison in Brooklyn and well over double the rate of the Bronx and Queens. That's crazy. I'm not going to read you this whole thing, but I encourage everybody, go on alvinbragg.com and then get out and vote. I know you don't think your vote matters. A lot of people don't think their vote matters. No, everybody's vote matters. I believe in voting, and we tell people all the time, and people give me hate DMs and tell me, yo, stop trying to pick presidents and shit like that. You know, I tell people the importance of uh, voting and the importance of numbers. Uh, maybe we'll set up another time this week for Alvin to come up on here, and we'll even do like a practice run or something, because I really want him to come up here, because I wanted to learn tonight. And when you told me, and I'm not going to lie to the people out there, when you told me, Joe, I need you to interview my man. He's going for a prosecutor. I know how much work you do. Nobody does more work than you to bring out innocent people who are wrongly convicted. Freedom. I've been there with you. I've been to your events. I've seen you donate money, donate your time. You're always fighting. You know, and so I know you mean well So. That was the only time I'd never talked to a prosecutor before. I, I wasn't trying to. I just talk to a. <laughs> you told me. You told me. So I listen. For you, out of the love of what you do for our people, I said, "Yo, I'm gonna interview this guy." And then, you know, while I got in and started getting these questions and 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 started figuring it out, I was like, "Yo, this shit is interesting right here." And uh, so maybe we can have him back on this week. And listen, you know, let me just let me just say one thing, Joe. I've seen you at these events performing, not asking. You called Joe last minute. We got an event for kids, blah blah. And, you know, if anything involved with this issue over the years, I'm talking going back 20 years. Joe shows up. He shows up on time. He brings, you know, he brings his special, you know, his special magic on stage. Everybody freaks every out. time. I mean, it's this is a guy, you know, I got nothing but love for you, Joe. You know that. I mean, because you Thank have you, shown Jake. up again and again. I wish more people were like you in, in that sense. But, yes, in this case, it's so important. I hope people can follow me as well on Instagram. Of course, I'm at It's Jason Flom. And check out the podcast, Wrongful Conviction. That's my podcast. Because Wrongful Conviction, we, 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 we examine these cases and we teach people important things. Like if you ever get picked up and brought in for questioning, don't say it. Don't say a freaking nothing. word. Nothing. nothing. My name is Fat Joe, and I want a lawyer. That's no, no, it. my name is nothing. My name yeah. is, I got a lawyer. I just told you I never talked to a prosecutor in my life. I was about to talk to your man running for the cut. I didn't know what to talk to this man about. I'm like, yo, why the fuck Jason got me talking to this guy? Yeah, like, because, you know. And then, But that's why it's so important to get him on here. It because is. Because people are so untrusting of the system and of district attorneys and prosecutors that I know you, you made it your life's journey to help and give back and get people out of jail. You work on this shit 24 hours a day. I know you're not introducing me to a guy who doesn't mean well for the community. That's why I want them to hear from him. Let's set it up this week, further this week, 
to get him on here, and then we, 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 we'll we go over these questions I got here. I got a lot of questions for this man. Yeah, I'm going to say one more thing, because you mentioned Innocence Project before. That's innocenceproject.org, or you could follow Innocence Project on Instagram. Tell me um, what Innocence Project does and how you've worked with them over the years, Jason. So the Innocence Project was founded about 30 years ago by Peter Neufeld and Barry Sheck in New York when they realized that you could use DNA to prove guilt or actual innocence in cases involving violent crimes, right? If you somebody's stabbed, somebody's shot at close range, somebody's, you know, not, you know, any kind of thing that involves, to you touch anybody, you're exchanging DNA, right? So they realized this and they, they put to, they got to work. I was the first, I became the first board member. So I joined them, I don't know, a few years after they started. I've been there for 26, seven years. I don't know. But anyway, so what they've been able to find, oh, hold on, that text. My request wasn't sent. I'm going to try it one more time. Whoops. Um, we there? You there? I'm here. Okay. Because um, it's frozen. Um, anyway, so... The um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it one more time. I just go to search, but Alvin Bragg, and see if it comes. Yep. Up. Okay, search Alvin Bragg, New York, NYC. And then and then just send and then search. I'll do is hit send. Yeah, yeah, send, and then okay. and then you'll see sent. it. And then right. and so you've been with them twenty some years. How many people have you, have you been able to exonerate through the Innocence Project? So the Innocence Project in New York has exonerated over two hundred people. These are people who are sentenced to death, sentenced to life without parole. Um, we've had people come home after, you know, 40 years, like crazy, crazy stuff. And, and fortunately, many of them come home sooner and are able to, you know, restart their lives. And of course, we try to help them with that as well. We have a program called Life After Exoneration Program that we do there for our clients. But the Innocence Project is, you know, it's the last stop. It's the last hope for so many of these people. Mm -hmm. And we're all, but more importantly, or as importantly, we're also changing policies across the country, changing the way eyewitness identification is, is performed, changing the way, you know, the junk sciences, the, the fingerprinting and all this other stuff is done, right? Uh, changing, there's so much shaken baby syndrome, the arson science, blood spatter. And when people, listen, a lot of people on this call, they're going to show up on a jury someday, right? And they're going to get, you know, you're going to have some people up there with lab coats on or fancy degrees and everybody saying, oh, yeah, definitely. I looked at the way the fire started and this and that. Or they're going to say, oh, the blood was on the wall in a certain pattern and blah, blah, blah. And everybody goes, you know, you see the jury sitting forward like this. Wow. You know, but the fact is, you can't believe that stuff just because somebody's saying it. These people are subject to cognitive, <laughs> cognitive bias. We know that if the if they know that the defendant is is a if the defendant or the suspect is a person of color, they're much more likely to to and we like to think scientists are not subject to that, but they are. So they're much more likely to, to testify in a way that is incriminating. And don't forget, Joe, we live in a country where we have six times the per capita, we have six times as many black people in prison in America per capita as South Africa at South Africa at the height of apartheid. Wow. So, what the hell are we doing? It's crazy, right? And it's all, it's all like a continuation of slavery. It's the new Jim Crow. So this is, this is all got to change. But it's got to change from the top. And now, you know, and by the way, I got to say, Peter Neufeld, who's the co-founder of the Innocence Project, he called me up. Now, this is not an Innocence Project endorsement at all. This is the know, individual I know, I know, person. Yeah. The individual person, the man, not not in his official capacity in any way, but he called me up and said, "Jason, I've never endorsed anybody personally in my life until now, and this man is is a man that I believe in that much. He's worked with him before. He respects him. You know, imagine that coming from him. It's amazing, right? So, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, it's across the board in the criminal justice reform community. We know how important it is that Alvin, you know, that these Alvin, are people. The Innocence Project have free people." who are doing life, that facing the death penalty. They were all innocent. And they were in jail for 20 years, like the Central Park Five. Exactly. The, uh, uh, you, you guys had a hand in that, right? The Innocence No, I think that was actually before the Innocence Project, because that was back, uh, that was like late 80s, early 90s, right? That was, I don't, I don't think the Innocence Project was even in existence yet at that time, right? Because those kids were 13, 14 years old. But I know all those guys. They've been on my mm -hmm. podcast. I've had Yusuf on. I've had uh, Raymond Santana was the first guest I ever had on the podcast. Wow. And, and um, you know, I think you're going to see these guys. Um, well, well, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it to be. But for now, but I know I have a very strong feeling they're going to come out uh, with it with a, you know, endorsement as well. Because, okay. 
you know, and then so that's listen, this week, lot. Jason, this this week we'll set it up with Alvin. We'll do a foolproof. If I gotta go, I'm in New York. I go down to where he's at and do it live. Me and him on the joint. Don't worry. I think that'll be even talking. better. Be yeah, we're gonna yeah. get it done. We're gonna yeah, we'll get, get it done. It. We'll get it done. Yeah, a hundred percent. And listen, Joe, here, Jace. Joe, I appreciate you. Brother. I can't wait to see you soon in person. Thank you, my brother. Be safe. And so let me tell you something. That is Jason Flong. Man signed, I don't know. I should have asked him. Taylor Swift, shit like that, all type of the biggest artists you ever see in your life. But his money, <laughs> his money and his time really goes to the Innocence Project. He's like he told you, he's the first board member for 27 years he's been doing this. And I go over there, I perform, I go to the events or whatever the case. They have freed hundreds and maybe thousands of people who were in jail and had no hope. They were done. But these guys were really innocent and they were, and they got trapped in by the system. And this guy makes it his lifetime. He don't even buy a sandwich for himself. All he does is free people. So he tells me, Joe, you got to bring Alvin Bragg on here? Because I never mess with prosecutors and, and DAs. I don't I talk to these people. But he's like, you got to bring him. I said, Dan, this guy got to be a good guy. Because, you know, Jason's whole life is based on freeing innocent people. But for some reason, I'll try again. We cannot get this guy on here. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Oh, let me see. I have no clue why we can't. I'm sending a request again. And so I thought we was going to learn a lot. But we learned a lot with Jason Flom today. But we're going to get it. Tomorrow I got Big Daddy Kane. Oh no! Alvin Bragg, yo. Now Alvin Bragg, what happened to your Instagram, brother? Yeah, I, yo, I, yo. My, my, my apologies, brother. Yo, I, I hit you up ten thousand times. You had me sweating bullets, anxiety. On I, I was show. I was pressing on it and it kept on rejecting me. I, I have no clue what happened. It just kept Alvin, on saying no. Ma ma from Harlem, New York. Live there. Your whole life, you graduated from Harvard. Uh, I was very impressed by the young lady who's running the scenes behind the scenes. She's, she's oh, who? Percy Sutton's daughter? Yes, yes, yeah. Keisha, and Percy Keisha Sutton. Sutton's a living legend in the streets of Harlem, you know? And, and so I know Jason Flum. I've never talked to prosecutors or district attorneys in my life. Where I come from is almost taboo. We don't do that, right? But Jason Flom has freed, him and his people freed hundreds of people that were, that were in jail for crimes they didn't commit. And he spends a lot of money, a lot of time doing this. And so when he says, yo, this brother's going to bring change to the community. And I'm like, yo, but Jason, what, what, what like, what, I don't know nobody who votes for a district attorney or a prosecutor. Like, you, I really don't, right? So you tell me why. Should people of color and white people and everybody, because this city, the thing that's so beautiful about New York City is that it's so diverse. But why should people vote for you and what type of change you're going to make to end mass incarceration? Yo, well, first of all, my apologies. I don't know what happened with the tech. Uh, and I I'll say my first reaction is your first reaction, right? I mean, I, I, this was not the path I thought I would choose. When I first, my first time I was saw a cop and had an interaction, it was him having a gun in my face, uh, throwing me up against a wall. And that happened a bunch of times growing up in Harlem. So I became a lawyer to try to fix that. Uh, and then I said, well, you know, I can fix that through a bunch of ways and started doing civil rights cases, started suing the police, uh, prosecuted an FBI agent as a federal prosecutor. Uh, so I went into this line of work to hold police accountable. I've uh, been watching what's happened in Minnesota, obviously it's breaking my heart. Uh, but Right now, I mean, just listening to Jason talk, I was inspired. I couldn't get in. Maybe there was a the universe trying to tell me something. He was able to rep harder for me than I could, uh, but was inspired because he's done so much work. And I want to follow the path that he laid out, follow the path that he's done in the Innocence Project, uh, reverse this thing. we got so many people. He mentioned the Exonerated Five. I'm about that age. I'm in Harlem. I grew up here. Let me ask you a question. A person who's been non uh, violent, who's in jail for non-violence and, and never created, created any violence and, and gets sent up to prison for uh, uh, death penalty. 
and their crime isn't violent. Do you think that's that that that's fair? No, look, we gotta we gotta look not only at freeing folks who are innocent, which is important to do, but even people who've done something, the sentences we have are way too long, right? I mean, uh, you know, I've got a commitment uh, that we're not gonna have, you know, we're gonna reduce the length of sentences uh, because it's not it's not making us safer, not making us safer, and that's the whole thing. We're gonna ask what makes us safer, and and so people who are in for that long, it's a, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. Uh, and so we got a whole policy laid out. Uh, when you come from and understand, uh, you know, growing up in Harlem and seeing what happens and what happens, you know, I, you know, growing up, people disappearing for a year or two, going and serving and coming back, it disrupts not just their life, right, but their whole family's life, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They got kids, they're taking care of other people. And so people aren't thinking about that. Prosecutors don't usually come from the backgrounds, you know, like, like, like we're talking about. So they're only mm -hmm. thinking about other things, the things that affect They're thinking people. about winning. They're going in there and it's mostly thinking about winning when the truth is the primary duty of a prosecutor is not to convict, but to see that justice is done, right? And so what, what would you do about the dismantle of the culture of winning? Of, yeah, it, it, you, you put your finger on it, right? Because it's not, this is not a sports game, right? This is not supposed to be, you know, rooting for a team. This is justice. So, you know, I, I oversaw uh, the attorney general's office and we, and we and so I know how to manage an office and get culture change. And part of it is to go in there and tell people, look, well, right. And so the biggest change is right now, people don't see the person who's being charged of crime as a person, right? They see mm. it as a case, something that, you know, advanced. It's a people. show. Fat Joe has a show tonight. And let me hurry up and do this show so I can make it to Milwaukee tomorrow to do another show. So they're going there. It's a bit of theater. But there's really a human being in the family who's really getting destroyed. Um, and, you know, some guys deserve to be in jail. Some guys are, are like animals. Like, they can't be out here. People who rape kids. I'm very, uh, like, I'm crazy with that. People who take advantage and abuse kids and, and things of that nature. But, um... Too many people are in jail and in broken families. One thing I did with Jason many years ago with my man Terrence, um, he did time and he noticed that the kids couldn't go see their parents because they didn't have money to go see them. So we wind up uh, donating transportation, a bus, so they could take families from Harlem, the Bronx, or whatever to go up and see their families. You know, I actually did that. Because I, I know the importance of the family being able to communicate and be together and things of that. And, and, and something that's always been always heartbroken to me is to see how people could just send somebody to jail f for all this time and break up these families. And we know kids are more likely to, to do the same shit and, and fuck up their lives if their fathers is up in jail. And a lot of these times, it's almost like a sport and rather than think, seeing the humanity in it. And so if you become uh, the head DA, how would you be able to spread that to all the other prosecutors? They, they have in their mind every day, yo, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm just going to win. Not, not truly in seek of justice. So the first thing we have to do is hire the right people, right? So if you look at who's in the DA's office, we're not hiring people who know this stuff firsthand. We need to hire people who've come up in it, right? And then when they get there, we need to value that experience. Right now, uh, most DA's offices, you get promoted based upon how many people you lock up, how many convictions you get. We need to change that. So, yeah. you know, we're going we're gonna to recruit people to come here based on their life experiences and based upon their understanding of the system. And then we're going to value their opinion, right? We're going to say, hey, it's not just how many people you lock up. That's, 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 that's not how we're measuring success. We're measuring success in how you treat people, how you restore people's lives. How you, are you going out in the community? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Sunday school teacher. I'm a, I'm a Harlem Little League coach. Like that to me, that's part of the job, right? I mean, I do it, you know, for, for my life. But when I get to that job, I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm going to tell people work in the office. You know, because it almost seems like prosecutors, uh, and no disrespect, but are almost like, you ever seen the NBA referees? Like, all these years we've been watching these games, you know they don't talk to nobody. 
Right. You know, when they leave, they take, they chaperone them out to like a different exit and they're not able to talk to regular people. And like prosecutors are almost like that uh, to where they stay together in the little bubble and they don't really be out in the community like that. And, and so, and so how do you change that? It's the same theory, um, theory of like police officers coming in from outside the city who, do, you know, come on, bro. You grow up in Harlem, you grow up in the projects. This guy comes from uh, uh, Rockland County, Sussex County. He don't know what it's like in the, in the, in the Bronx projects. Or the, and they talking to him with a different lingo, a different energy. And that's where all that things, you know, the, 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 the division starts. So that, that's, that's got to be major in prosecutors, too. Somebody who can actually feel, you know, what's going on out there, not just going in there like a robot. For sure. And, 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 you, and what you just said about the police, we talk about the police a lot, right? They don't know the neighborhoods. The same applies to the DAs, right? We got to have DAs that know the neighborhoods. They really right? don't know the neighborhood. Uh, so it's who we hire and it's when they get there, you know, how, how, how we value their experiences. I mean, you look if you go to the DA's website right now, it, 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 there's, there's not a whole lot of folks that look like you and me. And, that, and that's, that's something we got to change. That's something I will well, change. Something that we got to change. I don't know if you could do it or who's going to do it, but the no-not warrants, oh. it leaves people vulnerable to getting violence with the police, the brutality, getting murdered, getting, you know, you, uh, you seen the young lady uh, that got murdered while she was sleeping out there. Uh, are we looking to change this in New York City? Are we, how can we change that? Because we know it doesn't work. For sure, we got we actually got a we got a, a bill pending. Actually, the the, the the state senator from from Harlem, uh, Brian Benjamin, has got a bill in on no knock warrants, uh, working with a national group that's done it around the country. These are dangerous, right? You, you know, you mentioned Breonna Taylor, uh, what happened there, uh, and this again goes back to having people who have the experience. You know, when I'm, I'm talking to other folks, I'm like, hey, I've had the police try to bang my door in at 5 a.m looking for one of my relatives who lived with me when he got home from incarceration, right? So I know what that's like. I know what it's like to get that bang on the door, and, you know, you know, with my daughter crawling around on the floor. Uh, so we need people who know what that's like. So that's not, it wasn't necessary. They, they, were, they were banging on my door over, over an open bottle violation. It's like, come on, what, what are you doing right now? How's that making anybody safer? Uh, so we're going to handle that in New York. We got good legislation. It's important. It's, it's dangerous. We saw it with Breonna Taylor. And we gotta, we have to keep the momentum while we have it, and push that through. But then we need prosecutors who, who, you know, we don't need the law to change. So if I'm DA, I can say, hey, look, all my people, we're not doing no not warrants. I don't even need the law to change. That's that's why this. By is the way, guys, I do know Brianna Taylor's name. Now somebody said in the comments, Joe, you don't know her name. I've been saying her name forever, like so. I, I'm just, I'm just bringing that as an example to you. So the DA has complete discretion of what charges to pursue for prosecution. How will use the power to ensure the proper and lawful administration of justice? Right, I mean, so you said it right there, the DA has the discretion. So we don't, it's not like the legislature, we gotta get a whole bunch of people to agree and pass the law. It's like uh, with bail, right? When I was in my old office, one of the things, before the law changed, I retrained all the staff. I said, hey, we, we don't need the law to change to do the right thing. We have the power right here. Uh, and so we retrained everyone. So I I'm for all the laws changing because we need change everywhere in New York State. But if I'm elected Manhattan DA, the DA can just say, this is not how we're doing it in Manhattan. Uh, we're not doing it in Manhattan that way. That's my plan. Is it in your discretion? This is a totally other subject, but something, you know, that we've been hearing a lot, which is very important. And, they, and they've been saying, defund the police. Now, I personally think the title, the bullet point, Deep on the pol police was wrong. It was too strong because people who uh, don't know no better just read the clickbait. They're like, oh, wow, these people want to stop the cops. But truly what they're trying to say is let community board leaders and, and psychiatrists deal with people who might have mental illness, autism, you know, special needs. And rather than come out here guns blazing, Right, they can actually have someone who will understand them and talk them down and work this out without putting handcuffs on somebody. 
Uh, is that in within your power or or and what do you think about this? Yeah, look, I mean, when 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 we talk about the fund, people say, well, what does that look like? I mean, it looks like the suburbs, right? Like where people invest on the front end, right? Where the police don't come uh, for every little thing because we've got other resources. So uh, this, this some of this isn't the DA's power because if you tell the police, I'm not prosecuting, uh, you know, for example, this summer, you know, they, they closed the train down early. They were sweeping up homeless people and just arresting them. And the DA says, look, I'm not, I don't think that's a crime. You know, the solution there, as my, as my 11 year old son says, the solution there is, is housing, not a jail cell, right? Mm -hmm. So if you got a DA who says, look, police, I can't tell you who to arrest. I can't tell you to stop. But what I can tell you is if you bring them here to prosecute, I'm not going to do it. So you're wasting your time. Um, I feel really strongly about that. Growing up, my dad used to run homeless shelters. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time around the homeless. And so when I see, I mean, you know, this summer we, we had a, a, a homeless person uh, arrested for taking up two seats on the subway, which is ridiculous. And then the police charged him with using his face to assault the police officer's hand. Think about that for a second, right? Mm -hmm. That makes absolutely no sense. The Manhattan DA's office did that case. That's he used his face to assault the man's hands. Right. That makes wow. no sense, right? That's what we're talking about, though. That's incredible reasons. stuff, man. It's, I've Jason seen that. I've seen it. I, you know me. Uh, you know, I try to. You know, as I become older, I try to like be more open-minded, and you know. But when I grew up. I, I wasn't a nice guy, but man, when you talk about some brutality, some police harassment, I don't think nobody got their ass whooped more than me. I know it front and center. And I still try to be open-minded and give everybody the benefit of the doubt. You know, uh, and everybody get it's just a whole cultural thing. I think with the George Floyd um, trial, it's the first time I've seen other cops say, Nah, I think he was on his neck too long. I think he was, because for a long time, you know, anytime something goes on in, in, in New York City, you see the police union come out immediately and, and, and stand with the cops and stand with the, but that's not changing. That's, that, that's like, that's, that's 100 million percent bias. Like if anything happens in the near future, remember I told you, they're going to come out and support the cops, even if they look dead wrong. Well, well, you saw what happened today, right? I mean, with the video that came out of Mr. Wright, also out of, uh, you know, the same area with, uh, and they say, oh, 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 she made a mistake. She meant to reach for her taser. I don't know if you saw that video. No, I seen the guy, the young brother who's a lieutenant in the army. Oh, and he yeah, was, was scared. Too. Oh, he was scared to, to pull over in the dark. So he pulled yeah. over in the light, hands out. Right. They still maced him. Threw him on the ground, and he's serving the country. Exactly, and he's, he's putting his life on the line for the country. Like, but this happens every day. We just finally got cameras on the phone. <laughs> like, like this been happening for years yeah. and years and years. Yeah. I mean, can you see that when it comes across the courtroom? Could you see the mumbo jumbo when you read the report? Uh, yeah, look, this this is why. I brought cases against law enforcement, right? I, I prosecuted an FBI agent, right? We, we, we have to hold, if we don't have accountability, right? It keeps on happening. Uh, and so, you know, we hear, like you said, the same old lines, like, oh, it was a mistake. Oh, I was, I, I, I fear for myself. We get, we have You know what? I got my ass whipped so many times, like that kid that was in the army, the lieutenant. And you know, I'm not a snitch. I'm, I'm keeping it a buck with you. So I let them get away with that shit too many times. And I noticed that that kid stood there and said, and they told him after, because they always whip your ass or something and then give you a speech. And, oh, my bad. Your uncle's a, a lieutenant, a captain. Sorry, we can end this here. You can leave, but you done tasered me. You done beat me up. You done pepper sprayed me. And now you want me to be understanding that, that, that you were in a vulnerable position. This guy somehow had the body cam footage and his phone, and he stayed the course. Well, you know how many times that happened to me where I just let them get away with it? It was like, yo, it was just another cop beat your ass day. Like, and, and I noticed, like, yo, lucky for him, 
he stood the course and now he got results in this and this cop was fired. I have a question from a good friend of mine. Uh he was imprisoned uh for uh, for several years for something he didn't do. He has a TV show based on him now. His name is Isaac Wright Jr. I don't know if you heard of Isaac Wright. They have a TV show based on him for life on ABC. You know who Isaac Wright is? No, no, no. Good I Isaac Wright, you say? Isaac Wright Jr. Well, anyway, there's a TV show. He's a lawyer now. So he went to jail, defended himself, got himself out of prison. Now he's a lawyer representing people. You know, this guy's amazing, right? So the last question, because I was asking certain people for different things. This last question is one from Isaac Wright Jr., who has personally requested that I ask. There have been many instances where people have spent decades in prisons for crimes they did not commit. The main reason for this injustice is the decision of the DA's office to fight these claims, even when the evidence or circumstances are questionable. Would you consider creating a special unit in the DA's office consistent of assistant prosecutors, paralegals, and investigators whose sole duty and obligation is to investigate and advocate credible claims of innocence or misconduct, if found legitimate, to recommend a new trial dismissal or exoneration? Definitely. I mean, and that's why I'm so uh, excited about uh, having Jason Flom support, Peter Neufeld. I, I think that the work that they've been doing uh, has been the most important work, you know, we can do in this space. Uh, and I'm going to have a unit. I've got a whole paper on my website about it. Uh, that's going to be headed not by a, a prosecutor. It's going to be headed by someone who's been a defense lawyer uh, or someone who's worked with a group like the Innocence Project, who's dedicated, you know, their career uh, to these kind of issues. It's going to be someone who's never worked in the Manhattan DA's office before. Uh, you know, it's going to be someone that's not just waiting for people to come forward and say, I was wrongly convicted. It's going to be someone whose job is to wake up every day and figure out uh, who those people are. So we're going to be very affirmative about it. We're going to staff it up. I, I heard part of the question about, you know, is it not, it's not going to just be lawyers, right? We're going to have, uh, you know, uh, our own, uh, you know, medical folks, people who can dig into it. Jason talked about some of the fake science that's out there. Uh, we're going to dig into all that, uh, and it's going to be led by someone with that kind of background, the kind of folks that have been working with Peter Neufeld and Jason Flom for 20 years. I mean, the list is so long, it's sad, uh, right, that the number of people that they that they freed is great work, but you look at the fact that they were in already to begin with, uh, it, 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 it's such a problem. Uh, and, you know, not, a, lot, a lot more people are focused on it now because of, uh, of the work of, of Jason and the Innocence Project, in, in particular, also, the um, you know Ava DuVernay's uh, series on the Exonerated Five, I think, brought a lot of attention to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, folks like you and me, we've known this been going on for a long time. Uh, and, and so, one of my top projects, uh, and I just see someone put in the notes, uh, Brooklyn DA. I mean, Ken Thompson uh, had a, a great unit back in Brooklyn when he was alive. He died too soon. Uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna model it on best practices of the Innocence Project, and it's gonna be a top top priority. My brother. Tell the people where they can find you, where they can learn more about you. Uh, give them that last, you know, that Maury Povich, the kid ain't mine, the, the, the last plea. Tell them your .orgs, your everything, and why they should vote for you. Uh, it was an honor to have you on here, my brother, because I believe in you. And uh, you're speaking truth and wisdom. And I know, and I know if Jason is co-signing you, you see the way I go, is I, I study a person's credibility and their journey. And somebody like Jason Flom, whose sole life is to exonerate free people, and he's telling me this guy's the guy, this guy got to be the guy. I'm, I'm being honest with you, but tell everybody how to find out more about you and how they can get involved. Because this is, 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 am I wrong? Or am I just ignorant to the fact that black and brown people don't pay so much attention to the DA's race. So what I can say is, you know, a lot of people haven't paid attention. We've had the, we basically had three DAs in Manhattan in 75 years. So we haven't had a lot of real elections. So a lot of people haven't paid attention. The issue is the DA's office affects our community a whole lot more. 
So we got a whole lot more reasons to go vote. So primary day in Manhattan is June 22nd. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're in a field. There's other people running. There's a billionaire in this race. I'm the only black person. There's no Latinx person. Uh, I'm the only person who spent his whole life in a, in a neighborhood affected directly by this, uh, you know, who's dealt with the police directly, been stopped and gone into the courtroom and held them accountable. Uh, so look, this is a chance for all of us to take this office, right? Not about me, but it's about all of our communities, all the folks who've been boxed out, all the folks who've been falsely convicted, all the folks who, who had to reenter coming home and didn't get supported. Uh, that's what this is all about. And so we can get it done if I, if I, if I get everyone's help. So I'm at albinbragg.com. Uh, check me out. Uh, hit us up. You know, we're looking for people to help us hit the street, hand out posters. Uh, you know, it's getting warm out. You know, uh, you know, folks got a chance to get COVID shot. Let me let me ask you a question, free. Alvin. Did, are these other people going for a district attorney? Are they talking that talk like you? Some of them are. Some of them are talking the, the, the similar points, but they haven't lived it, uh, you know, and they don't know it in the same way. You know, some of this stuff is in vogue, so people are talking about it. Uh, but then, but then, importantly, there's some people who aren't. Some people are singing the same old tune. Uh, you know, uh, so it's scary. We've got a lot of lot riding on this election, a lot. Okay, my brother, thank you so much. That's Alvin A L V I N Bragg, B R A G G N Y C. All right, thank you so God much. God bless my brother, man. All I right, wish man. you luck. All right, thanks. And there you have it. My first conversation. With District Attorney and Prosecutor. <laughs> with a Ciroc bottle here. Listen, bro. I know the people that like this guy, the people who are supporting this guy. These people have been fighting to free people forever. We need change. We need to end mass incarceration. We need to stop putting people in jail for 10, 20 years for nonviolent crimes. Weed is legal now. And so the man is talking to talk like he's gonna bring niggas out of jail. He's gonna form a special team that isn't a prosecutor, somebody who's, somebody who's dealt with like Innocence Project, whose whole life has been dedicated to freeing innocent people. That sounds like something that sounds like something we need to pay attention to. I beg you all to go to Alvin Bragg, NYC. I want to shout out my brother Isaac Wright Jr. because I hit him up yesterday and said, you're Isaac, man. I don't even know what to ask this man. Like, you know, he's, he's a favor to put him on. Uh, they say he's a great guy. You know, my people called me up and told me put him on there. And then Isaac Wright came with that magical question. He said, yo, Joe, tell him. I said this and this and that. And he responded, great. Um, listen, tomorrow night we got Big Daddy Kane, the legendary goat of all goats, Mr. Chocolate, Mr. One and Only Brooklyn's in the house. Uh, and uh, he's here to talk about some things, man. God bless y'all. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Meaning, if you're going through a tough time, things are messed up for you. You look around to see if your friends got you, your family members got you. They're not there for you. And you get out of that and you're doing good, you don't need these people around you. And always put God first. Faith, belief in good times and bad times. We by far the biggest in the game. The big, 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 Biggest show in the game. And you don't know who I know. See you tomorrow. Peace.